was born in 1984 in Moscow. So my mom, when she had me, was 25 years old. Seems pretty young. But I have a sister. She's six years older than I am. So you can do the math there. How old my mom was when she had my sister. You have to remember something. This was the Soviet Union. This was not America. Back then, my mom got married at 18. It was not unique by any stretch of the imagination. Everyone did it because you needed to get out of the house. You needed to kind of do something, and that was the only way you could get an apartment. That was the only way that you could be assigned a living space of your own. It was actually called that, a living space. Finding an apartment wasn't like finding an apartment is here. You had to take the apartment that was offered to you in the part of town that was offered to you. You couldn't be like, oh, I want to live in Soho. I want to live in the village. I want to live on the Upper West Side. Let me go apartment shopping. You take the one that was assigned. My mom was a computer science major, became a computer scientist and programmer. Not because she liked computer science, not because she was particularly good at computer science, not because this was the major of her dreams, but because she was a Jewish woman in the Soviet Union, and that was one of the very few things that you could do. In the Soviet Union, commitment was made for you. You didn't really have a choice in the matter. So we came here. We came to Boston. And the reason that my mom came to Boston with us was not for the old American dream, the one that you think of, you know, get rich, streets are paved with gold, milk comes out of the water faucets, not that kind of thing. She came for choice. She came so that we would have the opportunity to choose our commitments, to do what we wanted to do, and not have that choice made for us. And so we gave up a line of waiting, a life of waiting in lines for one thing at a time, and we were introduced to this beautiful world, the American supermarket. I mean, oh my God, who knew that such a thing existed, right? This was, this was just, this was heaven, this was Eden. You had so much choice. You could really just, wow, I didn't even know these things existed. And this was just like my Disneyland. I never got to go to Disneyland as a kid. I got to go to the supermarket. And that's really the way that I learned to grow up. That there are so many choices here that you can really do anything you want to do. But then something happens. Everything becomes a choice, and life kind of becomes multiple choice. What are you going to choose? Well, you can come to a restaurant. Do you want fries? Do you want a salad? What kind of a salad? Do you want dressing? What kind of dressing? Dressing on the side? Dressing on the salad? You know, you're going to a supermarket. Paper or plastic, or did you bring your own bag? If you brought your own bag, you can have a five cent discount. What kind of bag did you bring? Oh, we don't take those bags. So it really, it was just this land where every single thing was a choice. And you can choose, you know, I majored in whatever I wanted to major, and I majored in three different things because I wanted to learn all there was to know. You can marry not at 18, but at whatever age you want to marry. But something happens when we have all these choices. Actually, two things happen. One, we sometimes get tired. It's something that psychologist Roy Bellmeister calls decision fatigue. We have all of these choices all of the time. We're always making them, and so at some point we just throw up our hands and say, I don't care. You know, salad, does it come with salad? Yeah, just give me the salad. I don't care what's the default dressing. Perfect, I'll take that. So you just stop caring. You stop making choices actively because there's just so much choice always to be made. And there's another side of that, which is sometimes, instead of going with the default choice, we don't choose at all because we go and we know that all of these options are out there. We're told that the world is our oyster. And so we never want to commit to anything because committing to one thing means that there's going to be a choice there that's not made. And so you're always closing off options and we don't want to close them off. Now, as I said, I was born in 1984. According to some people, this puts me right at the tail end of Generation X. According to others, it puts me right at the beginning of the millennials. 
By the way, we're a generation, both Generation X and Millennials, that's been a case of not wanting to give in. That's been a case of wanting to take all of the choices that are. You're not happy with your relationship? End it. If you're married, get a divorce. You're not happy with where you live? Move. If your boss doesn't appreciate you? Quit. You're not in a fulfilling job? Take another job. We never are forced to do what we want to do. First, I think that's not fair. But secondly, I think that there is something to the fact that sometimes, yes, we can have it all. You know, you might gain a few pounds, but you can put something from every single tempting dish and buffet onto your plate, and they'll be really not the worst of the world. But other times, we really do have to commit. You know, unless your oral hygiene habits are very strange and you have some routine where you switch toothbrush heads halfway through, you choose one and you stick to it. This is a toothbrush head that I'm going to brush my teeth with. We really have to make a choice. When we choose one toothbrush head, you can't use all the rest of them. Alison Murray, in 1984, won the Pulitzer Prize. She put it this way. There's a rule I think. You can get what you want in life, but not your second choice, too. There's something to that. You can get your favorite toothbrush head here, but not your second choice. Something really interesting happens once we choose. Once we commit, we become happier. Once we commit to something called the endowment effect, we start liking the thing we've chosen more than we liked it before, and we think that the second option that seemed really, really appealing before is not so appealing now. So once we commit, the very act of commitment makes us happier and makes us value what we've chosen. So we're really, really, really going to love that toothbrush head after we've been using it for a while. It's really easy to, com to commit when there's no commitment to be made. If all of your choices are made for you, the commitment doesn't really matter. It's also very, very easy to choose inertia, to choose the devil you know. If you're the Soviet Union and you're suddenly free and you have all of these choices, it's easy to say, well, I don't really want them, and if you do it for me, but when commitment really, really matters is when it's hard. That's the commitment that actually makes a difference. And that's when the value of commitment really comes out. On the way here, so every single morning, I start with a blank page. I use Microsoft Word normally, so a blank document in Microsoft Word. So I quite literally have to work in every morning. I always have a visual reminder. You're starting blank. You're starting with all of these infinite choices that you can make. All of these stories that you can tell. All of these things you can choose to write and share with the world. And we have to make an active choice every single morning to commit, to put something on that page. You're choosing something very specific to put on the page, but you're also choosing to create. I'm choosing not to go online. I'm choosing not to go and have coffee at the coffee shop next door. I'm choosing not to do a lot of things and to actually make something happen. And I realize how lucky I am. I realize that I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing. If my mom had a choice, she would be a computer programmer. She's good at it. She doesn't particularly like it. She's not passionate about it. She's stuck to it because, you know, that's what she knew how to do. But the reason we're here is so that we don't have to do that. She didn't care for what, if I wasn't a doctor or a lawyer. She didn't care for me and nobody at all. As long as I did something that I was committed to, and then I made that commitment. And so every day I realize that I have this gift. And that is really what commitment is. In a world of choice, commitment is a gift. And it's not the obligation. And I think if you think of it that way, it becomes much easier to realize that we really need to take the opportunity to decide. And to make the most of the fact that we do live in a country where we can commit because we want to and not because we have to.